Good evening, friends and family. My name is Jeremy Balkin. I'm a finance guy who runs marathons. I was born in Sydney, Australia, and I live in the heart of the world, the capital of the universe, the epicenter of finance, the greatest city on earth, New York City. <laughs> My mission in life is to positively influence the allocation of capital. Make money by doing good. This is what I call the noble cause. If we can change the culture in finance, we will change the world. This is why I moved here. A better tomorrow. But tomorrow is a word that's not in my dictionary. It has no meaning. It is a luxury we don't have. I learned this the hard way. When I woke up in a hospital bed in 2008, in December, my arm was attached to me, I couldn't move after surviving an extreme sporting injury that would change my life two days earlier. And when I opened my eyes, the surgeon said to me, Jeremy, you are a very, very lucky young man. And he told me that he'd inserted a 18 centimeter titanium plate and 14 screws. And eventually I would have use of my fingers and full extension and rotation of my arm. And of course, while this was happening, Lehman Brothers had just collapsed. The global financial crisis had just started. And before my eyes, my life was just falling apart. My livelihood and my, my health were in peril. But I made a vow. I made a vow that never again would I value my self-worth based on the money I was making or allow my energy to be dictated by the volatility of the stock market. And I made a pledge that with the second chance that I'd been given, I would devote every ounce of my being for whatever borrowed time that I had left to being the best person that I could be and hopefully impacting the world. So the next day I went to the gym. I was in a sling. I got on a treadmill. After five minutes, I nearly collapsed. But I went back the next day and the next day. And eventually I would start jogging and then I would throw away my sling and start running. And a bit like Forrest Gump, I just kept going. And next weekend, in this great city of New York, I'm going to be running my fifth marathon. <laughs> and along the way, I established a, a non-profit, philanthropic fundraising platform called Give While You Live. And together, we have raised an enormous amount of money for different causes around the world. I say this because I've seen the power of money. I've seen how far a dollar can go. The impact. And I tell you this story because changing the culture of finance is going to be a long, painful road ahead. Kind of like running a marathon. Because the trouble is, in finance, we've had too many slick salesmen with fancy suits and colorful ties saying all the right words, very little action. I'm a super driven individual. When I say something, I mean it. When I put my heart and soul into something, I've got the horsepower to go the distance. This is a marathon worth running. And when you're on that bitumen and the mind starts asking you, why are you doing this? What are you here for? When you hit your pain threshold, I'm here for the noble cause because finance is too important for the world to keep screwing up. You know, if we think about the world we're in, it's a mess. We've got record youth unemployment, stagnant global growth, enormous debt, pretty bleak prospects. The only way out of this mess is by growing our way out of this mess. And when you think about the world we're in, you know, the United States 10 years ago was 25% of the world economy. Today, it is 20%. Today, the US financial services sector is 8.4% of GDP. If the United States financial services sector was a standalone entity, it would be the 11th largest economy in the world, bigger than the entire Australian economy, 
but only just because we're actually number 12. <laughs> if we can change the culture of finance, we will reform the system, we will kickstart this economy and we'll get the world spinning again in the right direction. This is what's at stake. But the culture is broken. It needs to change. And I want to be absolutely clear, I am a finance guy. There is no more passionate advocate for free markets than me. But the culture needs to change. A culture that misprices risk, disproportionately rewards success, and fails to penalise malpractice is a broken culture. So many good people have left the industry and so many more wish they could. And it's no surprises that when Harvard did a survey in 2007, 47% of its graduates wanted to pursue a career in finance. In 2012, 9%. Less than one in 10 of the best, young, bright minds of this country wanted to go into financial services to make it better. We've got a problem. We've got a big problem. Until we start incentivizing those that do the right thing, and excommunicating those that do the wrong thing, how are we going to change this culture? I'm going to tell you how we're going to change this culture. It's through action, not words. It's through rewarding those and demonstrating by positively influencing the allocation of capital. We can make money by doing good. Why would you need to do the alternative? And that's why we need to start thinking about investments through a different lens. A proprietary new framework that I've put together, which I call the 6E paradigm. Of course, the economics matter. But what about employment, empowerment, education, ethics, and the environment? Understand that when we allocate capital, there are externalities, positive and negative. Understand there's a multiplier effect that goes far beyond the returns we see in a performance statement every quarter. Do the numbers add up, but overlay that with how many jobs have we created? Will this investment make people better? How will it make people smarter? Does this investment fit with our values? And what is the impact on the planet? Because only then we will start to invest in the vital infrastructure that we need in society, like roads and railways and ports and clean energy projects and water desalination plants. And only then will we start to take a much more activist approach to our equity investments and pressuring boards and CEOs, how they make them accountable for how they manage our capital. And only then will we start rewarding those companies that believe that US labour and environmental standards should be the gold standard for international manufacturing operations. And only then will we start to engage with the most dynamic entrepreneurs in the world, providing microfinance to women in the developing world who can't attain traditional capital. You give a woman in the developing world a dollar, she gives you two. That is positively influencing the allocation of capital. That is making tons of money by doing good. That demonstrates that wealth creation is an important thing. Because how we make money matters. When I first came to this country, I was told by somebody, Jeremy, Wall Street does not understand these values. It's like you're speaking Chinese. I looked at this person, I had to laugh, and I said, Xi Xi, which, which means um, thank you in Mandarin Chinese. And I said to this guy, I said, thanks, mate. I said, if you could speak Chinese 10 years ago, you'd be a very rich man today. Because the world we live in is so interconnected, it is changing so rapidly, if you do not go to the frontier markets, the world is going to pass you by. Wall Street needs to get back to its core, its reason for being. When you think about the privilege of being in an industry where a decision you make or a recommendation you make can be the difference between an investment being funded, jobs being created, taxes paid, dividends received or not, or a client retiring at 65 because they've met their financial objectives or never, or a kid going to college, tuition free or not at all, or the, the profits from a successful industrialist and entrepreneur being used to fund a philanthropic foundation or not, this is a privilege. 
This industry is a privilege. It is the noble cause. Finance is not about taking a pile of dog shit and repackaging it as Swiss chocolate. Finance is not about trading on rumour and innuendo and inside information for ill-gotten gains. Finance is about matching ideas with capital and capital with great ideas. It's about funding the roads, the schools, the hospitals, the universities, the scholarships, the academic institutions, the research and development, the small businesses, the tech startups, the young entrepreneurs. Because a better tomorrow is a world where a kid can put up their hand and say, my mother worked for a bank, with the same pride and passion they could say, my mother is a speech therapist at an inner city public school. That's a better tomorrow. But if we wait for others to put up their hand, show leadership, conviction, get their hands dirty, tomorrow is never going to come. But if we change the culture of finance, not only will we have a better today, we'll have a better tomorrow, a better next week, a better next month, a better next year, a better next hundred years. But if we don't, when the next crisis comes, the world will not be so forgiving. Change will be forced upon from the outside with adverse consequences. It could be the government, it could be Google, it could be a black swan event, it could be technological disruption, it could be a new payment system, it could be a new currency, or it could be someone from within. It could be someone with a funny accent and a new set of values. I extend my hand to the money men, the market wizards, the banks, the hedge funds, the sovereign wealth funds, the pension funds, the institutions. Come on this journey. Let's start positively influencing the allocation of capital, making money by doing good. Because the choice is clear. Join me, let's be part of the future, let's be part of the solution, or be part of history. This is the marathon I'm running. I'm going to be at the finish line. But who's joining me? Because this is the noble cause. Thank you.